let's start with, for me, my team is going to be Florida. Listen, Florida's been in the news a lot lately uh, because of NIL, because of the Jaden Rashada uh, story. We don't have to relive that. But it peeled back, for me, the top layer of this onion of dysfunction that I think NIL is going to identify at a lot of schools. And listen, if you don't have your your T's crossed and your I's dotted, I think you're going to get caught out as this Wild West kind of figures itself out. And unfortunately for Billy Napier in Florida, the Gators were one of those programs. Now, whether the football program had anything to do with this, who really knows, right? I mean, it sounds truly like the boosters wrote a check that they ultimately couldn't cash, and that bit their program. So that's not Billy Napier's fault. That's not the recruiting staff's fault, but it looks so bad for Florida. And for me, if I'm a blue chip recruit, how can I trust anything that that donor base is saying? How can I trust any of the NIL opportunities that legally cannot be signed to me until I have signed on with that program, right? Other, otherwise, it's inducement. So for me, Florida's lost a lot of credibility. You add in the fact that the quarterback situation at Florida is beyond dire. I mean, they, they just don't have a proven winner on that staff right now. Anthony Richardson's gone to the draft. They bring in Graham Mertz, who kind of felt like they might have whiffed on their first 10 names. And then it was like, oh, Graham said yes, so we're going to take him. Um, you know, if you think Graham Mertz is going to step in and be a difference maker in the SEC, I, I don't know that you watch much Wisconsin football, right? He's he's going to be the lesser of the quarterbacks in most conference matchups that they have. And so for me, I, you know, recruiting was good. They had a very solid recruiting class, but missing on what should have been your best quarterback prospect, uh, which also, again, was really just kind of a, a spite move at, at Miami. They, you know, the report was they really went after him hard, not because they think he's just this game changer, but really because Miami wanted him and they wanted an NIL win over, over the Canes. All of that drama with the fact that you don't have a QB1, um, you're losing several of your best linemen, specifically on the offensive line. Losing Osiris Torrance at, at interior guard is not going to be easy to replace. I just don't think they have a lot of things going for them right now. And in a loaded, what could be a loaded SEC East, Georgia and Tennessee vying for the top. We'll see what happens with Kentucky. South Carolina is coming on like gangbusters. For me, I'm selling any stock that I have in Florida. Do you guys think that Napier makes it out of 2023? Yeah, I think he makes it out. I mean, look, I think Napier is a really good coach. I think that this just has to do with the landscape around Florida right now, right? Obviously, the NIL thing was a disaster, right, Trey? We touched on that with the Rashada episode a couple weeks ago, but... Look, I mean, at the end of the day, you just have to say if you're competing Florida State and Miami is obviously surging a little bit um, and, and you have the rest of the SEC and, and, you know, who knows what the pod structure looks like for them. We don't know who their permanent rivals are going to be. We don't know who they'll play on a year to year basis. I just kind of think you're in a bad situation with the landscape if you're Florida. And I, I think Napier will get a little bit of a longer leash just because, you know, that Florida job has been a little bit of a rotating door. Um, but I think he'll get a longer leash in this case, at least out of 23. It's going to be interesting, though. I like I, I think I agree with you guys. Before their bye week next year, they have at Utah, Tennessee at home, at Kentucky, and at South Carolina. All those are in the first. Ooh, that could be over for four. Half, that could be four losses, right, before the bye week. And the Natives are going to get a little restless in Gainesville <laughs> if we're sitting there at two and four, three and four, yeah. going into the bye week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Garrett, you've got two programs that are sort of getting up north. One of them that you were madly in love with at the start of last year, and another one that's out of the Big Ten. Which which team are you selling stock on right now? Well, we'll talk about Minnesota first. Um, definitely selling the stock on Minnesota. I know that is not a popular move on this podcast with a nope. couple of Bro, absolute homers. Bye, <laughs> Just a couple of homers for the Minnesota Golden Covers. Um. No, I just look at the end of the day, you lose like your entire offense when it comes to production. I looked this up on the pod. Mo Ibrahim had 320 attempts last year, rushing attempts. They passed the ball 279 times collectively. Right. Not not their top quarterback passed that way. And then some other quarterbacks also yeah. through all of their pass attempts totaled 279. 
So when you get rid of more than 50% of the plays that you ran, just see ya, have a nice career in the NFL. And I think that he will. But I don't know, man. I just, I can't buy into that. You can't replace that much production that quickly. But it's not just the fact that they're losing that. You know, I, I like the coach. I like a lot of the situation they have. I just don't like it as much as I like what else is going on in the Big Ten. I don't like it as much as I like the fact that, yeah, like Matt Rule at Nebraska could be a real home run for them. I don't like it as much as, much as the fact that, you know, if they're going to Wisconsin, I think that they're going to have a great situation in Wisconsin. They've already had guys, you know, transferring in. They've got a lot of promise there. Illinois had a really good season. I know we joked about it being the shadow realm this last year, but I think that part of the the, the conference, their division, I think is going to get a lot better this year. And we don't know what it's going to look like once USC and UCLA hop in to join the fun. So, you know, imagine them in a situation where you restructure their schedule and they get yearly matchups with the Trojans and the Bruins to go along with an Iowa and a Wisconsin and a Nebraska. Things could get real rough for them. And, And I'm not saying that they're a terrible team or that, you know, everything else is going wrong. But similar to what I was saying about Florida, I just don't think the landscape works out well for Minnesota. I think that things are changing around them and rising and they just by sitting still or maybe slightly regressing i think they're falling behind man i i still want to say ski ma though baby like i (laughs) i just think that they're built for sustained success in that division i think they're going to be built on running the ball and defense and just bullying people in that division i think that you're going to see that continue under pj fleck remember tanner morgan got hurt this year too. He was supposed to be, and their number one receiver, they dealt with so many injuries and they were still right there in the thick of the division title race at the end of this year. So I don't know. I'm not ready to give up on my darling golden gophers just yet. (laughs) Hey, I'm I'm right there with you. I'll row, I'll row the canoe up, up the Creek. Uh, Y'all are just, y'all are just homers for the wrong M in the big 10. Hey, I, just because I have a home field apparel tab open to Minnesota right now, I'm like, hey, I'm not, a homer not, for the Golden Gophers, sir. Not a sponsor could be. Um, tell you, you know, home field just started selling hats. A company that didn't just start selling hats is University Traditions. Not a sponsor could be, would love to be. Uh, shout out to you guys for uh, sending me a, a College Station collection hat. Looks great. Rope, black rope hat. Really, really fun look. So, um, anyway, sprinkle that in there. Trey, bring us home. Uh, you've got a couple of options here for stock down. Who are you choosing for this episode? I'm going to go a little bit off the wall here because one of mine is very obvious. Um, and I don't know what the other one is. So I'm going to go with the not as obvious one. I'm going to go with Cincinnati and you might Ooh. be thinking, Trey, they're moving to the big 12. How could their stock be any lower? How could that not be rising up going to the big 12 from a strictly on the field perspective? It was really down this year. And I know that we expected them to take a step back. Obviously, they went to the playoff in 2021. Obviously, we expected them to take a step back. But just the level of play on the field was subpar this year. And they won a lot of close games in the American. They won, you know, not in sexy ways. And look, Cincinnati, even in the year that they went to the playoff, wasn't winning games in sexy ways. That was kind of the knock on them as they weren't dominating these teams in the American, but this year they took that up a step further and even lost to some teams that they definitely shouldn't have on paper. So to me, I think a lot of people are asking why did Luke fickle of all the times that he could have left of all the times that he could have cashed in on his run at Cincinnati. Why did he leave right before they were going to the big 12? I think that's because he's a smart man. I think that he is kind of being the anti Matt Campbell just a little bit where he knows, I think he knows in his heart of hearts that Cincinnati is going to really struggle with this transition to the big 12. I don't know what their over under is going to be set out for next year. I'm going to pull up their schedule real quick, but it's going to be a tough transition in my mind. And I think Luke fickle, looking at his roster, looking at who he was going to have to go up against in this new Big 12, I think he knew that. And I think that he made the jump at the right time while his personal stock was still at its highest. And it might have dipped a lot after they started losing a few games in the Big 12 over the next few years. So, yeah, combine that with the fact that a whole bunch of their team left to go to Wisconsin, left to other places once Fickle left. Recruiting, we talked. Garrett and I talked about that on the show a couple weeks ago. Their recruiting hasn't really made up for that, even in the transfer portal. 
guys, even the head coaching hire, Scott Satterfield was, we haven't done our head scratching head coach hires yet for this year, but Scott Satterfield might be number one in the head scratcher hires for me. <laughs> so just all of that put together things. I means I think that Cincinnati, that transition is going to be very difficult for them. Fair enough. I mean, listen, I, I, I do, I do think people are assuming that UCF, Houston, Cincinnati, BYU are going to come in and have some measure of success immediately. And history says that's not necessarily the case. So I think you're right. I think you're, you're dead on that maybe for Fickle, if Cincinnati wasn't kind of his permanent coaching home, um, why take that risk, right? Why, after Matt Campbell has watched his stock plummet, take that risk and and not bet on yourself to immediately just go and make another program like Wisconsin better, right? Uh, so I, I think that's a good point. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not necessarily as down on the Scott Satterfield hire as you are, but I do think that you're right about the fact that there is a downgrade in coaching. And yeah, it's probably not going to be as competitive. Remember, guys, like the Big 12 was just a fairly competitive conference this last year and the two teams leaving weren't necessarily as big a part of it as some of the uh, like right like we're talking about Kansas State swinging upwards they make their championship game TCU makes a playoff um, you know Baylor still in the mix Kansas was a lot better this last year and so you I, in Texas Tech like we just already mentioned on this podcast a lot better and so I think that you know maybe if you were to do this move I don't know say five years ago you could convince me that these teams would come in and succeed Right now, I'm not as convinced. And so, I, I mean, I think you're dead on, Trey. I think Fickle was smart to head to Wisconsin. Um, and, and you know, I think Satterfield is going to be a fine coach for them. But it is going to take them, I think, a, a more immediate dip before you will see the stock rise. I think long term, all these schools are in a much better position coming into the Big 12 because they're tied in with a, a better, stronger conference. Mm-hmm. But in the short term, you could see some pretty severe dipping before you see the the, the stock raise on any of these teams. Gracious, yep. how about 